hi. I thought I would sit down and talk to you because, oh, because I just have some things to say. First of all, okay, let's go from the beginning. So I mentioned at the end of my last vlog, Ohad was positive for COVID and I felt that it was coming my way and it did in fact come my way. I am on day five of having COVID. I was really wanting and I thought that I was gonna make some content like to help me also get through the quarantine, to have something to do, to have, to enjoy. Um, but it really, really kicked my ass. The first night specifically was really, really hard for me. My symptoms were a lot worse than Ohad had. I had a pretty high fever and yeah, it just wasn't fun. So that plan was completely thrown out the window because only yesterday on like day four did I feel like I was in a sort of place where I could um, talk to you. I mean, you can probably even hear still in my nose that I'm pretty nasally. Oh, also I chopped my bangs off yesterday. I was just standing there in the living room like, today is the day that I just take the scissors to them. So yeah, it's my Carla Bruni fantasy. I did, however, manage to read one book, <laughs> which was Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. When I first started this, I was like, I don't know if I like it. I don't know if it's just not right for me in, the, in this moment. I don't know if the brain fog of COVID is keeping me from getting this or enjoying this. But actually, I pushed through and I read it. And I have to say a little bit of that because this book is dense, it's dense and brainy, which doesn't sound like the right kind of read for when you're having COVID brain fog, but I did somehow get through it, so good for me. I've never in my life been more divided about how I feel about a book while reading it. While I was reading this, half of me was like, I hate this and the other half was i love this or i hate this narrator and i love this narrator lauren euler she is a critic only a book critic and she writes for all of you know the big um publications she's based in new york and in berlin we're following an unnamed narrator she goes to berlin um on a kind of a trip and she joins like a bar hopping, like a pub crawl tour. The guy that's running this tour, his name is Felix, and she kind of hits it off with this guy and they start a relationship. And then he moves back to the States from Berlin and she obviously goes back to New York after her trip and they start dating. And so the book picks up in the beginning that she's in this relationship and she's really not satisfied. She's sort of over him. Just the lack of oomph to this relationship. She feels just like mediocre and she's not getting enough from him. She's not really getting anything from him. And one day she decides to look in his phone and she realizes that he, she's under the impression that he has no social media presence whatsoever, but actually he's running a right-wing conspiracy theorist Instagram account that has gained quite a lot of following. The book kind of, yeah, just takes off from there. This book like takes some like turns and it completely surprised me. So I really, really don't want to spoil that for you. But later on, she goes back to Berlin and she's also kind of experimenting with her own use of fake profiles, fake accounts. She goes on dates on OkCupid with these with these different guys. She kind of makes it her project to go on dates with these men in Berlin and every single time she meets them, she tells them she's someone else. She makes up a story about what she does, about her name, so she's living under these kind of fake accounts. And she's grappling with online presence, offline presence. Where is that line? What is your real, what's the real version of you? The one in real life or the one online? So. I have to say by the end of the book, 
And like towards the middle already, but really towards the end of the book, I really started to like it. The problem I had with it was I think that the main character is so fucking cynical. He's cynical about everything, like literally everything, while participating in those things, which, as we know, is quite relatable. For example, she judges yoga class and like white girls from Brooklyn taking yoga class, but she also takes a yoga class. She's a white girl living in Brooklyn. That's like one example, but yeah, she's just cynical about everything and also politically, you know, she goes to the Women's March and she's sort of cynical about everything there, everyone participating. It's like, whoa, is this like really problem? Do I find this problematic? I watched a review that really um, got this book down and said oh, this character is really, really privileged and she doesn't look at herself at all. Like in, in a way she's self-aware, but she does nothing about it. She does nothing with it. I don't know how to explain it, but I could kind of relate to that. I do find like, you know, obviously the conversation around social media and the truth. Also, yeah, descriptions of things that are happening in our society, how we also want to be perceived and how we um, may also have a certain amount of ego that allows us to think that other people will be interested in our life. And that's why we put it online. So she's cynical about those kinds of things also. And I really relate to all of those things. We all are so familiar with those situations where we roll our eyes at something, but we participate in it. We say, I don't believe in that. That's bad for the world, but I do it also. So in a way we're like, we can recognize our own inherent hypocrisy in those situations. I think the problem is that we are wishing that she's different that she's aware of all those things, like we're aware of those things, but that she does something about it and she doesn't. So the question is whether, and I had this conversation with Jessica, I talked to all my bookish friends kind of about this book, but Jessica from Jessica's Bookstack, we were wondering if the critique of this character has to do with this maybe like these days in our social and political climates, um, we are kind of asking for characters or books to be sort of utopian-like, that the character makes all the right choices, or if they're privileged, they recognize it and they do something about it. So the matter is, there are so many people like this character. Do I think that she's great? No. She's fucking irritating. Do I recognize myself sometimes in this character? Yes. Does that make me want to do better? Yes. Our character is who our character is. So you can say it's valid or not whether someone, whether Lauren Euler writes and publishes this character. I think it's valid because someone else could write a different character and she decided to write this one. Anyway, I don't know. I'm like totally jumbled up. I enjoyed in the end. I'm still, I'm still not like fully sure how I align with it. The whole section of like her going on dates as like this fake person each time, I thought that was so funny. I'm glad I read it because it was kind of a big one from last year that I didn't get to. Yeah, tell me your thoughts. I know that people, when I mentioned it, were um, writing me that really divided on it. Some people really loved it. Some people um, were annoyed by it. I don't know. It was good. Okay, I've been talking for 21 minutes about that book and I have no idea what is even gonna be able to make it in the video. Let's talk about some other things. My next read, I've decided just to pick back up M Train by Patti Smith because I was wanting some wholesome, inspiring writer, artist vibes. Also, she always gets me in the mood for creating as an artist, and I soon am starting to create a new dance work. So yeah, it always seems fitting to pick her up when my mind is turning towards creation time. Additional research that I'm doing for my um, new choreography is to dip into 
Poetry by Adrienne Rich. Lindsay Glass on Instagram. I'll leave her um, Instagram downstairs. She really loves Adrienne Rich and posts her quotes on her Instagram all the time. So, so I saw that I had a Kindle copy of Collected Poems 1950 to 2012 of Adrienne Rich with an introduction by Claudia Rankin, who is the author of Citizen, which I really wanted to read and I heard some friends talk about it. And then I got um, access to two ARCs from NetGalley approved for Vladimir by Julia Jones. I think this is like a kind of interesting novel where the main character is working in academia and so is her husband. Like they're both professors or something and her husband has accusations made at him about his sexual relationship with students. She has become obsessed with a junior professor or some man named Vladimir. That's also like not a completely appropriate situation. So that sounds really interesting. Out by Avid Reader Press slash Simon & Schuster. And then also I got approved for Post Traumatic, novel by Chantal V. Johnson. This is out by Little Brown & Company. I think this comes out in April. Hence the title, Post Traumatic. It's like a, it's a DWM. It's a depressed woman moving novel. Um, so both of those sound sounded really interesting. Excited to get to those. Probably alongside doing some like like what I call like research reading. When I'm working on creating a dance piece for stage, I am like always putting together a mood board with a lot of photography that's inspiring. I, yeah, I take some poetry, I get postcards, I I just gather like a lot of research and I'm trying to understand like how I could maybe make that into a video or something. Well, it's something I'm working out in my head, but I, I think it could be interesting to share. I'm just not sure how to format that. We made chocolate chip cookies yesterday. They were nothing fancy or special. All the main ingredients in a bowl and did the trick. Very good. Okay, we watched some things. What did we watch? We're almost done with the bowl type which is our kind of like trashy uh, watch that we love. We've become like super attached to those three women in that series. Also started a new series. Well, the series is fairly new, not brand new, but new to us called Landscapers, which is like a four part HBO true crime series. It's not a documentary, it's, um, but it's based on like a true crime story. And we're watching it because it's Olivia Coleman, and I will watch anything that that woman is in. And the style from just watching one episode was unbelievable. So interesting, unique. I have never seen something done like that. So a very singular point of view in terms of the artistic standpoint. We watched Freaky Friday um, for a good old Lindsay Lohan, Jamie Lee Curtis throwback, and that was so fun. I forgot, like, you know, there are those movies that are really, like, you remember them as such great movies because of the time you were in your life or, like, you were younger, and then you go back to them when you're older and you're like, this movie sucks. This is not that. This movie is really good and they're both so good. And it really made my heart like so happy. And then we watched also Spencer, which is the new film with Kristen Stewart portraying uh, Lady Diana, who we know I love. And that was not as successful for us. We did not love it. I think this director has such beautiful imagery and the way that the film looks is gorgeous and the music is beautiful like the art direction is is really something to appreciate and to learn from and be inspired by but i did not love like something about the script it's really hard not to compare it to the lady diana segments of the crown and i must say i really really preferred the crown Ohad is out of quarantine and in the world, and I am still here. <laughs> I tested positive a few days later, so I'm a, my release is like a little bit in delay. Also, I wanted to share some art with you in the dance world. 
um, which is, there's a new work by a Portuguese choreographer that I worked with a few years ago. And her newest work is available to watch online. So I will put the link in the description. I don't know how long it'll be available for, but it's for free. And I know that these days we can't all go to the theater to see live performing arts. And she is such an exciting, exciting choreographer and figure in the contemporary dance world so if you'd like to open your mind to that um then feel free to watch um i watched it last night and was just like blown away i wanted to share that with you because i feel like that's an interesting angle of things i can offer you um that maybe other people can't i will need to film probably tomorrow my january wrap up read quite a lot this month i'm pretty i'm pretty proud of myself Okay, my back starts to hurt from sitting on the floor. Thanks for sitting and chatting with me, keeping me company in my last days of quarantine. So yeah, that's it. Bye, love you. You're the best. Thanks for watching. Bye.